It's Friday, everybody, and if you're watching the 30 seconds of pre-show after whatever, um, Paul was trying to guess the car behind me. But you got any other guesses here before I tell you? Hmm. Now that I see the front, I can't. Again, it looks exactly like a BMW Z series. Uh, from the back, it looks a lot like a, a Miata, late model Miata. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guessing. I'm gonna guess knowing you. And your predilections, it's probably some kind of a Tesla something something. Nope. Uh, Kevin H. <laughs> I'm going to quote him here. He said, oh, God, it's a Pontiac. Oh, wow. Like a, like a, one, of, uh, one of the last ones I made. What, what, is, what is today? Paul? Sun something? Sun fire? What, what, what is today's summer? Summer? Solstice. Very good. Hey! Ding, ding, ding. Bam. I look at you with a purpose. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. It was a good-looking car. That one cut a little deep. <laughs> with, no, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it. <laughs> but it was just—it was just so natural, just flowing out of your mouth. Just no, I didn't mean it in a critical way. I mean that you were making a funny. That's good. Yeah, it's perfect. It's the Pontiac Solstice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that car was ahead of its time, or behind its time, depending on you. <laughs> depending on you. Your opinion of the fate of the Pontiac Motor Comp Corporation? Yeah, I mean, let's say it's worked out well for GM, maybe. Not really. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. I mean, they're still around, so I guess they, they haven't been Chrysler yet. And um, <laughs> kind of like Microsoft, still around in the consumer market. Bam! I'm on fire. <laughs> I don't know if I'd use the word fire. Um, <laughs> But as uh, as Ron also points out, there was a Saturn version of this car called the Saturn oh. Sky, okay. which was in the heyday of GM just taking badges and changing the names and hoping that one of the cars would actually sell. Oh, and, that was uh, the worst. Yeah, it was the worst. Um, so this one came out of DigiTimes. I, I don't know if it's worth <laughs> writing up or yep. whatever, but apparently uh, Intel is cutting the prices on their next-gen chips because they are pretty scared of what's happening with Camp AMD. Now, this is, I believe, to OEMs. But um, I think they're they're feeling some like real pressure because AMD came out with some pretty good stuff. Yeah, that's uh, not right. circling the toilets anymore, eh? Yeah, I mean, basically came out with chips that would be just fine for probably ninety eight and a half percent of the consumer market at least, and probably even more of the enterprise market. And, uh, uh, so they've done something Qualcomm is also shooting for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens when I get too much sleep, guys? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, which reminds me, this is a very weird connection, extremely weird connection, mm -hmm. graphic too much because I was thinking about sleep <laughs> and then Jeez. sleeps tie into Fitbits, right? Now you've really, you've really raised the bar on my expectations. Go on. We, we got sleep. Sleep ties into a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. uh, we got my daughter a Fitbit Ace 2, which is designed for kids. Wow. Um, mostly because can you she, give them? Can you deliver a little electronic shock when she's screwing up? Is it that I kind think of thing? That's that's the advanced version <laughs> with LTE connectivity. Uh, but yep. she's really like taken like a big I don't know interest in my wife and I because we track our steps with Apple Watches and do all I that see. stuff. And then she yep. obviously wants the same thing, so we bought one. And um, I'll probably end up doing a write about write up about it to see how it works for her from her perspective because yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like a totally different like. She's just happy to have something hanging on her wrist that turns on, probably. But um, yes, yep. I will tell you. Um, I don't know what it tracks exactly. I assume it's mostly best around uh, based around steps. But yep, that's about uh, and of course, given her like uh, her tiny stride, she probably gets like eighteen thousand steps just going to the bathroom. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, <laughs> so uh, one thing I've done recently is I stopped looking at the sleep data from my mm -hmm. Fitbit because it is horribly inaccurate. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this anywhere, but there was a story a couple of weeks back in the New York Times about this topic. Um, in my particular case, I, I started literally noting to my wife as we went to bed. I'm like, what time is it? And she would say like 1030 or whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. yep. And then, you know, you get up in the morning. It's like, oh, you got five hours of sleep. You went to bed at 1245. Like th like consistently would chop yeah. at least two hours off every night. And I'm like, I, I can't. I just can't deal with it. Yeah. So that was one thing I stopped doing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um. Yeah, your daughter know, probably I, sleeps ten hours a night. I mean, God knows, but um, well, unless it's thunderstorming, and then I'm sleeping about three hours a night, and she's crawling into really? bed because she's been woken up by the thunder and oh, lightning. And this has been a tough year then, because it has done that a lot. <laughs> it is. It is sunny outside. I ate my lunch on the back deck because I was like, I need some vitamin D. Um, so, d just <laughs> semi randomly, um, yesterday yeah, we got a no script. I mean, I mean we just yeah, who cares? <laughs> um, I stepped out to the front. It was mm -hmm. full blown sunny also downpouring right in front of yep. me you know 
And I'm like, yep, yep. I think this is the third or fourth sign of the apocalypse. I can't remember. But later in the evening, uh, it, it wasn't dark yet. It was just kind of getting dark, you know. Um, my daughter commented on how many fireflies there were on the front lawn. And we, we have a ton of fireflies here. Like this is something we never really had in Dedham. Mm. And um, I mean, there were hundreds of them just really going over the grass. And um, like hundreds. It was like a Disney movie out there or something, you know. So as I'm standing there, I noticed some bats flying around. And eventually yeah. it occurred, I, you could tell there were at least three. And they were just flying in circles. And they would occasionally dive bomb, you know, probably found an insect or whatever. So I called my wife. We were also standing there on the front porch looking at this. And like, I don't think I have ever seen this behavior before. Mm -hmm. And I have to assume it's related to all of the wetness. Like these creatures have probably all been interrupted on their normal schedules. And so mm -hmm. when the, the rain finally stopped, like they just came out, you know, to catch up on a couple of days of feeding or whatever they're doing. Yeah. It's kind of, it was kind of weird. Yeah. Not quite, you know, frogs falling from the sky weird, but. Yeah, locusts and pests on, and all sorts on the, of. It's on the spectrum. It's on the yeah. It's on the. Uh, it's on that spectrum, whatever that is, the plague spectrum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slowly closer to midnight or whatever it is. Um, the other things that have been cut, not just fly population by the bats, is Google just basically tossing in the towel on tablets. Like they're they're done. They're yeah. not even gonna, they're not even going to try anymore. Um, yeah, this follows a rumor from early in the year about scalebacks in their hardware division. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the it's the part of the company that makes the tablets, the Pixel tablet, Pixel book, yep. I guess it's called, and then the whatever the Pixel what was the six, what was the Pixel tablet called? Uh, that stupid piece of crap they announced last fall Pixel that nobody book, bought. Pixel Slate. Pi slate, yeah, With the stupid round keys on the keyboard, like mm -hmm. you know, it's like a, like a kitty computer or something. Um, yeah, this doesn't surprise me. No, These I mean products. That, Nobody's been able to really sell tablets. I guess if you're going to buy one, Samsung is probably your last yeah. bastion of yeah. hope. But even them, they're, Apple doesn't you know sell a is, ton though? of iPads anymore, but they still sell the well, most in the industry. They still sell, they sell million, you know, yeah. several millions of a quarter. I mean, I, I think the, the tablet market has kind of topped out sooner than people thought. Um, honestly, I, I get that certain people have like a thing against Apple. I, certainly, I understand that. But... You know, when it comes to tab, like actual tablets, you know, you're going to play games on, read, watch mm -hmm. movies on a trip. Whatever this and basically there's the iPad, yep. and then if you're really cash constrained, I guess, in a, or maybe you have kids and you don't want them with an expensive toy, you could get them like a Kindle Fire or whatever they're called mm -hmm. these days, I, I guess. But it is weird to me on the straight up Android tablet scene that not, none of that stuff has been popular. Yeah, and I don't think it's Android. I think it's the apps and the app developers. You know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, on the Apple side. Developers have really done a great job of tailoring their iOS apps to work on the bigger screen. Mm -hmm. And they look different. They don't just scale up. You know, it's not like a like an email list where it's just a list. If you have the bigger screen, you get like a preview pane too. You know, it's they're like more sophisticated. And I don't know why that hasn't happened on the Android side. But I think that's the problem. Yeah. You know? I would also argue that there's a bigger risk when you buy an Android tablet. Like it's stealing the IBM slogan. Like nobody's ever been fired for buying an iPad, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just... Yeah. It's like buying a Honda Accord. You know it's going to work. It's going to be fine. It's going to do what you need to do and uh, whatever. And you can go buy an Android tablet and you might save a few bucks or get a few different features, but you don't know. You're missing how, out though. Yeah. You're, you're missing out. I, I literally just the other day, coincidental to this, I was walking upstairs. I, I don't do this every single day, but probably two or three times a week at the end of the day, like 4.30ish. Mm -hmm. I'll go upstairs and I'll I'll, I'll like lay down in the bed and I actually work a little bit laying down, you know. Yeah. And uh, I this day I brought my phone, which is an Android phone, my tablet, because I wanted to reference something I had in pocket, which is an iPad and a laptop, which, is, of course, is a Windows laptop. And I, I, I briefly actually just had this thought, you know, three completely different platforms, three completely different device mm -hmm. types, each one the best choice, I think, you know, for my opinion, for that device type, you know, and that moving between those things is really not that difficult. Um, it's not not at all difficult, maybe is the right way to say it. They all serve some kind of a purpose. They're all really good at what they do. And I wouldn't use the platform from one in any other kind of device. Like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want Windows on a, t a pure tablet. Like it just wouldn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. To me. I mean, I, I know it, it's opinions are different. It is what it is, right? That's, if you're looking to buy a Google tablet, you're not looking anymore. Oh, wait a couple of weeks. So I think we'll probably be on a fire sale eventually. You know, the Actually, slate. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, I was surprised. By the way, if, I, I don't know if this is true that today, but after mm -hmm. I read about this yesterday, I went to their website. If you go to store.google.com, mm -hmm. they'll have device types or you know product types up at the top in a menu, 
and one of them says tablets. And when you click on it, you, it goes to a blank page. <laughs> But if you search the, that site for the product, uh, the Pixel Slate, you can actually bring it up and still buy it. It's still there. But it was kind of interesting that on the day that this was revealed, that part of the site was not working. Yeah. That may be fixed now. I don't know. But mm. it, yesterday, that certainly happened. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I bring up Honda Accord and all that and broken websites was Honda's website. I was trying – I build – half the time when I'm eating lunch, I'm just building cars on the internet. Like <laughs> either I can afford them – like a Honda yeah, Accord yeah. or a BMW 7 Series that I will never own. Anyways, sure. um, Honda's website's been broken for like 48 hours where you clicked on build an Accord and it took you to the minivan. And I thought this was like something in the back of my head or like some greater being mm -hmm. trying to tell me I'm going to have like yep. seven kids and I need a van. So you need, you're right. You need at least a crossover, yeah. some kind of a you know <laughs> station wagon. I haven't done what you're describing in a long time. I have spent a lot of my life doing exactly what you just described. I'm a big car guy, but mm – -hmm. um, uh, the, my last impression of these car websites, it doesn't matter if it was BMW or Honda or whatever, is they were all made by the same person, right? Like oh, they're, they're similar, exactly yeah. the same, you know, I think. It's like when you use Uber or Lyft, like the mm -hmm. app. I think clearly, this is the same app, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's the same thing. You know who has the best online builder website? Mm -mm. At least in my opinion, is Porsche. Mm -hmm. Porsche. Porsche, interesting. If it's what separates them from like anybody else is like so when you build a, a 911 or whatever, there's a, like millions of options. Not really, but it, mm. there's at least oh. <laughs> probably a hundred. Sure. But they do a really good job that if you like click this Porsche is gonna have black mirrors, then it like actually changes it that. It changes than, it to show the yeah, yeah yeah rather than just showing you a price update or something. So yeah, hmm. yeah. Um, things that aren't as transparent as the Porsche online car <laughs> configurator is 19H2, which as mm -hmm. we all know by now has not dropped. It's not, we, Microsoft is just kind of ignoring this or us. Uh, it's worse than that. They're bald faced lying on Twitter about what's going on. And I don't like it. I, I, there, there are two issues here. One is that from a windows cust like a Microsoft customer perspective, there are different support life cycles for the H1 and the H2 uh, builds of Windows. Mm -hmm. And customers actually need to know what that thing is so they can plan. And I don't mean customers like you and me, like Joe Bozos out in the street that are enthusiasts. I mean like actual corporate customers. It is unbelievable that they have not explained what's going on there. Aside from that, there's the boobery of the Windows Insider program, which has de descended into the most unprofessional front piece for Microsoft that I have ever seen in my entire life. And I, I'm getting a little tired of someone from Microsoft saying something very specific and then coming back later and saying, oh, we didn't really mean that. Like, I, I, they, need, they need a crash course in communications. I am, this, is, this is ridiculous. Between the, the modern OS thing they talked about a month ago, the Joe Belfiore stuff from two, you know, two different builds in a row where he's like, I didn't say that. You know. uh, like, yeah, you did say it. And it's on video, idiot. You can go back and look exactly what you said. You know, I, they – it's not hard to come out in the public and say something nonspecific. Just say, look, we're working on this thing. We don't know if it's going to come in the next version. We don't know when it's going to come. We don't know if, what, if it will take this exact form. But here's our thinking today. It, it absolves you of everything. You know, Don't say something's going to happen at a particular time and then get all bitchy on Twitter when it doesn't happen. You said that. You know who actually you know? does a good job of this? Actually, at Microsoft. No. Well, it's a lot of their enterprise stuff, but Teams does a very good job. They actually have a forum where it's like, these are the features we're working on. They're in progress, in development or whatever. And yeah. when they're done, they ship. When they're not, they're not. I don't know. Microsoft is still in this kind of weird mode where they think they have to be all secretive about the features coming to Windows as if someone's going to Well, uh, yeah, you say Microsoft. I, I, it's that part of Microsoft, right? Yeah. So, you know, we both talked to Jeff Teeper, I guess it was oh, yeah. last week. It seems like a million years ago, but yeah, whenever was that last was. last week. And one of the observations I made to him was that, you know, it's very interesting to me that the Office 365 team, which is part of Microsoft 365 with Windows, manages a level of complexity that is unknown at Microsoft other than perhaps at Azure. And, the, and yet they are able to come out with and clearly communicate every single month hundreds of updates across all of the different product types that they have. Meanwhile, you get Microsoft, or the other part of Microsoft over here making Windows. These guys have, are responsible for two feature updates a year. And then, you know, security updates and bug fixes and stuff. And they can't communicate to save their lives, let alone ship something that actually works and arrives on time. I, it is, it boggles the mind how one part of Microsoft is completely competent. And then this other part, the part I happen to care about the most, by the way, which is why I'm so upset about it, is so completely incompetent. It, it's, it's really frustrating. 
I don't tend to disagree. Did I communicate that clearly, Brad? Because I can so elaborate. So what I heard was that you're really happy with the <laughs> development process of Windows and that you like surprises. Yeah, you, did, uh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, did, you didn't. Oh, well. Well, that is going on. There was something else that was happening, too. And I can't remember. can't remember Something what. else that was happening. Hmm. Was there? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just looking at, like, some of the cell phone rumors for the fall, and it's like three cameras, four cameras. Five cameras. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It's. I don't. It just kind of blurs together at this point. I mean, which is kind of nice. Although I yeah. wonder, I wonder now. You know, most companies that make a nice smartphone, like a high-end flagship smartphone, you know, uh, Samsung, Apple. Actually, that's pretty much it. No, Google, whatever. Mm -hmm. They ha and, and even OnePlus is eking into this territory. Although I feel like they're kind of on the on the line. Frankly, Huawei actually is maybe the best example. Yep. Um, for whatever else is going on in those systems, the cameras are excellent. And by the cameras, I actually, I think I kind of mean the software for the cameras, right? I think a lot of it is mm -hmm. the services that they build on top of the hardware. The hardware is almost a commodity, if you will. I mean, even in multi-lens systems, whatever. At some point, everyone's just going to figure this out. This will be, you'll be able to buy like a Samsung A series or get some kind of a mid-level Nokia or whatever it is. And it will have a, like a superior camera system. It will just be great. Like what? What are they, where's the innovation happening after the care? Like, right. we're, we're, we're almost there, you know? Mult, is it the, the folding screen, multi-screen? Like, where's the next explosion? Because I think photography is something that most people appreciate and want. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother-in-law is out in Italy this week, and he's taken just, he's not, I don't think he brought a camera. I think he's just yeah, taking no, pictures with his phone. Just yeah, and they're, phone. they're beautiful, you know? He's not a photographer. He's just a normal human being, just like I am. I mean, um, but he's got a nice Samsung. I think he only has. I think it's an S9 Plus or whatever. It's not even this yeah, year's model. But yep. yeah, it's great. So what? I mean, what's the? How do you get people to buy new things now? Well, if all that stuff just works great. That's the problem. It is. It is a problem. That's, that is the problem. Well, not so much for us because we can get away with what I'm hoping is to give my phone to my wife and let me buy the new one. Um, but we're hoping. Yeah. To <laughs> You have an X, you have a 10 S, right? 10 S. Yeah. And I'm hoping yeah. that my wife will just inherit, the, inherit that one night while she's that sleeping. That is not, that's perfectly acceptable. That oh, phone's yeah. going to be viable for years. Like that's yeah. a great phone and, the, and the a great camera. The next one is, it's just going to add another camera, probably slightly faster processor, maybe a little bit better battery life. And that's probably about it. Yep. Yeah. She'll be able to get dark mode on there and you know, it will be beautiful. It'll be like a brand new phone. Yeah. I figured she run out like an iPhone seven or eight or something on a seven. Yeah. Yeah, so, that'll be that'll be a huge upgrade for her. Yeah, I thought I was I was gonna buy her birthday's in August, and I was like, man, maybe I can probably get like a good deal on a 10R. But then it's like my the 10S is probably better than the yeah. 10R. Um, oh, even a, even a year later, like meaning whatever, trying to yep. I don't know. Yep. So we got that all going on. What is there? Anything else happening on the world? Other than the the weird plague behavior I'm seeing here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, that's that's. <laughs> I don't think that's. That, that might have been oh, some God. wishes coming true on my part. Yeah, so exactly. Part of the, right. right. Is, are the trees supposed to be upside down? <laughs> is that normal? I don't know. It's gorgeous outside. It is. It is. Your Amazon package has shipped. Um, that's not what I need. Uh, 76 <laughs> degrees outside, which is a little... I, 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 <laughs> I have a Fitbit, so I don't, I don't get to see the weather on my watch. Although there is a weather app. It's just impossible to mm -hmm. get to. So I will I'll always I'll say to my wife, like... Uh, Hey, do you know what the weather's supposed to be? And then I'll look at my watch and I'll be like, I don't know why I keep doing this. It's not on there. <laughs> like I, I can't stop from looking. It's like, uh, nope, still not there. Yeah. But you just did that. I, how many taps to the weather on your on your watch? Like zero. how quickly is zero? Oh, because it's right. On the There's point. a little a little a little complication. There you I, go. Use the right term. And because I'm fair skinned, I also have the UVI index on there, which is at 9.0, which means I will burn very quickly. So I need to be careful how long I'm out in the sun so I don't get get the cancers. Um, that's amazing. The, the, the sun set will set at um, 9.06 p.m. tonight. and It is the solstice, as you obviously yep. know. Yep, yep, yep. Pontiac <laughs> solstice, that's, that's it. You got anything else going on, Mr. Threat? Nope, nope. I keep keep working on my stuff. I'm going to probably, I, I hope to get some book updates going over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be some more programming window stuff if you're following that series. Um, you know, the usual, I guess. Yeah, just nice to be home, right? It is. I this is very odd. I don't know what to do. 
um, knowing I'm yeah. not traveling for a couple of weeks. So I can actually put the bag away. Like I had my bag was just out. Mm-hmm. I think for six weeks straight. Like I, I, it didn't make sense to put it somewhere. I had, I kept needing it. You know. I had something. Oh, the thing that um, people actually watching this are probably going to be interested in. So when we were in Washington D.C. last week, we recorded yep. what we call Health of Tech. Right. And we recorded it. We had a couple different cameras set up and we got some B-roll footage. I don't know the exact state of it, but I know that the editing is coming along. It's what, it was an hour in yeah, length. Yeah, I think we, well, we talked for, I would say 50 minutes. Yeah, something like Remember that. Remember we were supposed questions. to hit 45 and we went over a little bit. Yeah. And then we had a couple of quiet, we only had a couple of questions, but so the, the total recording time is probably about an hour. Yeah. So yeah. that should be up on the site soon-ish. Um, Mary Jo was involved with that as well. We bamboozled her into it and yeah just as a as a preview for people who are going to watch this later i just want to be clear i was not threatening mark benioff's life <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's going to sound like i did um but you know that's like a, that's a deep fake i just don't it's a deep it's a deep <laughs> please please don't arrest him <laughs> or maybe they should and then also I, shout out to was... uh to Isab- i cannot pronounce this last name isabella who fell in the chat room who gave us a gold mm-hmm. star for five days in a row of the podcast technically six of five because we also did the yep. beneath the surface which is actually live on the site as well yep 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 so all right folks so that wraps it up for today for this live edition of first ring daily you can find us what we should be back here next week regular scheduled programming hopefully you have a wonderful weekend and we'll catch you right back here next time